Hello friends. In this video on urodynamic evaluation of low urinary tract, I shall be focusing on some basics regarding the study of abnormalities that you see in the voiding phase. The name for this study is a pressure flow study and it simultaneously measures the pressures of the bladder as well as the, the urophrometry and uh, the most important value of the pressure flow study is to evaluate a case where the q max on urophrometry is low so low q max why is that happening in the patient this can be either due to bladder outflow obstruction in that scenario the bladder will record high detrusor pressure or this can again be due to an underactive detrusor muscle and here the pressure flow study will record low detrusor pressure so with low q max you can have either high bladder pressure or a low bladder pressure now see here this study and uh, these that's how the pressure lines are moving on the graph and as you give a command for voiding you will notice that the pressure line in detrusor and p vesicle are rising nothing is happening with the p abdomen and it is maintained for a sustained duration and then it drops right the pressure reached is not very high and the euroflow graph that is generated is inverted u shape and normal bell shaped graph so this is a study which is a normal pressure and normal flow but then you can have abnormalities such as this one as shown in this study the lines in the filling phase are showing you this kind of a picture and as you give command for widening you will notice that the p detrusor and p vesicle reach very high p abdomen shows nothing but the urophrometry graph is showing you low q max or for us for the entire duration the flow rate is not very high so it is low flow high pressure combination and which is characteristic of bladder outflow obstruction in a third example you see here the the pressure lines in the filling phase and uh, as you give the command for voiding you notice that the pressure lines detrusor pressure and p vesicle pressure are not rising and same thing is happening with the uroflow uroflow is also low to ensure that the lines are patent you do a cuff check with cuff there some change taking place in the pressure lines so this is a situation where you have low pressure and low flow which is typical of underactive bladder now this is the observation by looking at the graphs the charts that you see but today we believe in more objective indices to measure the bladder outflow obstruction and one such commonly used index is bladder outlet obstruction index which is, which is known as booi and this is p dat at q maximum divided by twice of q max i am sure you have to learn to remember this formula but if you remember it very often then you put it into your practice and if the bladder outlet obstruction index is more than 40 the patient is obstructed if it is 20 to 40 it is equivocal and if it less than 20 it is not obstructed right and the ics has shown it in the form of a graph the nomogram like that where you you have three zones unobstructed equivocal and obstructed the another index that we commonly use is bladder contractility index bci and this is calculated by adding p dat max with the five times of q max again this is a formula which you have to remember and if the bci is less than 100 it is regarded as underactive detrusor if it is 100 to 150 it is regarded as normal but if it is more than 150 it is regarded as strong contractility and again ics has put up as a nomogram in this kind of picture where you see these three zones zones depicting 
weak contractility, normal contractility and strong contractility. In some patients of bladder outflow obstruction, we you suspect abnormalities of the sphincter muscles, ex particularly external sphincter muscles, you will need an electromyography. You can apply a patch electrode around the anal verge, which will record the sphincter activity. But better is to use a needle electrode, which appears through the skin and close to anal orifice, and you take the needle into the external sphincter muscle. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages of each. The patch electrode obviously is more convenient to the patient. It is not dislodged during the study, but it is less accurate and it gives you inferior signals. The needle electrode is uncomfortable, of course. It may get dislodged during the study, but if it is in place, it will give you very accurate recording of muscle activity and it will give you a superior signal recording quality. So now look at this study again. Now you will also see an EMG line in the bottom. And this is the filling phase. In the filling phase, you notice some sphincter contractility to maintain the bladder. And as you give the widening command, the pressure flow lines are showing elevation. The urine flow line is showing low Q max, but sphincter activity is certainly showing you high spurts. So here is a case where a sphincter, instead of relaxing, is now contracting during the phase of widening. And that is the reason for low Q max. So this condition is high pressure, low flow but due to detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. In some patients, you need a video urodynamic study, which means that during the urodynamic study, you also attach a CRM image intensifier. Instead of saline in the bladder, you fill contrast in the urinary bladder and you observe the act of contraction and the act of opening of the bladder outlet, the funneling of bladder neck on the CRM, and you put both pictures together. This study is required in patients of complex bladder outflow obstruction, such as primary bladder neck obstruction in women, in men, patients of detrusor external sphincter dyssynergia, in patients who are incontinent, who have failed surgery, some patients of complex neurogenic bladder dysfunction, or if you have reflux in the upper urinary tract or into a diverticulum, and you do not know how much of contrast gone in the diverticulum, during the act of widening. So these fine situations require video urodynamic evaluation. So I hope you have understood the basics, abnormalities during the pressure flow study and which study is required when. So thank you very much for your patient listening. In case you have any question or comment, please write to me on my email.